This is the Superhero Sidekick Coaching Podcast. I'm Joel Smith. I'm Joe Baker. We're not here to be the superhero. We just want to be your sidekick and help you along in building your business, building your not-for-profit. Let's help you grow it fast and really scale. Be sure to check us out on Facebook and visit us at SuperheroSidekick.com. So my latest adventure uh, with, uh, actually, Joel came along on this one, was once a year I take t- uh, about 27 guys to West Yellowstone, Montana, which is the snowmobile capital of the world, and uh, just take them on some adventure. Uh, for me, it's a, it's, there's a kind of a holy ritual that it's so important where I'm hanging out with men, feeling a little bit dangerous. You know, we don't, we don't get that in our daily lives uh, nowadays as much as men. And being with good men, spending time with them uh, is one of the, I think, critical components of living a healthy life as a man. And so it was awesome to have Joel along. And he, uh, he got his machine up to how fast, Joel? Oh, I think I was going about 65, which felt like about 100 on a motorcycle. Yeah, it's, it is. These machines are fast. And one of the reasons it feels like 100 is because a snow machine, and a lot of people don't know, know this, is the fastest land accelerating vehicle there is. So he go, you go from zero to 65 or zero to 90 in just moments because it has that big track. And as soon as you hit that throttle, you're going that speed. And so uh, we just had a ball uh, climbing mountains and rolling machines. Uh, we had a little bit too much damage on this last trip. Uh, and so uh, we all had to split a pretty big damage report at the end. Only 11 out of the 27 snowmobiles were not damaged. Uh, but fortunately, not a single injury, because if you remember last year, I had broken my ankle. And so um, I'm really, it's really good when nobody has any injuries. And usually we don't have any injuries, but we always have some snowmobile damage. Um, you know, it's, it's just part of the sport. Um, well, with that, like, you know, it's so important that we build strong habits. And I'll tell you one habit for me uh, to make the snowmobile trip possible was I put a giant sticky note on my wall and every day I would try to get one person to say no. So I made a giant list of people on this big sticky note on my wall. And the sticky note's like, you know, two and a half feet wide by like three feet tall. And it's just covered in names. And every day I wanted to find at least one person to say no to me that they wouldn't come on the snowmobile trip. And if I had 150 names on there, I ended up both 27 saying yes. And so it was just so important that I wouldn't, wouldn't leave my desk until that day I got someone to say no. Because most guys are pretty indecisive. They, they want to think they're going to go, but they're likely not going to. But as soon as they say no, I'm like, oh, that's great. I can move on to all the other guys and focus on them. And so um, that was a habit I had to develop this last season to make that possible. And so with that, uh, let's talk about some domino habits as uh, uh, is the topic that Joel really wanted to talk about today. And why don't you tell us what that is, Joel? Oh, man. So domino habits is something I've been thinking about for a long time. I've been reading a book here more, more recently that just kind of reminded me of it. But I was reading the book called Atomic Habits by James Clear. And um, the idea of domino habits isn't necessarily from there, but it did uh, kind of inspire me to uh, to talk about this today. So um you know, it's it's interesting. One thing that I learned, Joe, from uh, when we were snowmobiling is that I didn't realize how vulnerable snowmobiles are to to fall into ruts. You know, if you're if you're mm. traveling on a road or a path or trail that has had a lot of traffic on it, it's really easy to get your to get your you know your your the skis in the front stuck in a rut mm. from the guy before you or from whatever path was there. And if, if they went off track, you could easily just get steered right off track too. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know, and it, it happens the same way with, with driving a car on a snowy road too. You can just get stuck in a pattern and, and get knocked out of, out of bounds pretty easily. And I think, I think with atomic habits, the whole idea is that, you know, we, we really can get stuck into ruts, you know, habits that take us off the trail, the intended trail. Um, you know, it's, it's so easy to do that. And, and oftentimes we don't even know that those ruts are there because we, it's just so automatic. And, you know, if you think of dominoes, you think of, um, you know, a, a, a bunch of little tiles, you know, linked up together, just side by side stacked. And it's, it's really pretty cool. There's some people that really do some remarkable things with dominoes, but 
You know, the one thing about dominoes, and I'm talking about stacking them. I'm not talking about the game of dominoes, but, you know, it's it's interesting how, you know, you line up all of these dominoes and then there's a trigger. It's it's that, that little tipping of the first domino and it sets off a whole trail, you know, a bunch of little actions that that tip one thing one thing after another and i think life can be like that you know we we tend to have um things that can trigger us in our life positive or negative and and you get triggered and then all of a sudden y y it's pretty predictable what's coming next because you've already done this a million times and you're just doing what you always do or or sometimes you can even see it in somebody else too like you're maybe you're at a, at a holiday gathering with your your family and somebody brings up a certain topic and you think, oh no, here comes grandpa's story. He's going to tell us about his uh, Vietnam story because you know what happens every time there's a trigger and then there's a story that comes afterwards or whatever it is. And and so the whole idea here is that um, we, we want to try to get an understanding of these, of these dominoes. And Joe, I think, I think before we talked here, you said it pretty well, you, you really identified that each domino is one small little aspect. It's not one big thing, but um, what's your thoughts on that? Yeah, you know, when I look at look at the list of like a daily routine that you put together, like uh, you talk about like an alarm clock goes off, then you go to the bathroom, brush your teeth, take your vitamins, weigh yourself, take a shower, put on deodorant, all those things, like and many others, brush your teeth, uh, you know, brush your hair, get dressed. Those are all things that we do every day without thinking about it, you know, with you know, the very, I mean, you're going to do that every single day. So why, what, why is it so hard to get another positive thing into our life? You know, and a lot of times I think is that we try to do like a big thing. We try to add like, oh, and I'm going to do a hundred pull-ups a day or even 20 pull-ups a day, you know? Um, uh, but you know, if you look at all those things, those are actually, all those things happen really quick. It's sometimes better to add, you know, three pull-ups a day, you know, or five minutes on the treadmill a day, you know, which actually turns into something greater. But, um, but building in these tiny little habits, these, it, it's not like you're adding, you're just adding one domino, you know, at a time. Um, and really that, that can lead to tremendous success for somebody. Yeah. And you know, it's interesting too, each, each domino can be one small little habit, but when it's tied when it's tied to the domino in front of it and tied to the domino behind it, it starts to create a bigger, a bigger picture, a bigger scenario. And, and so now you just think about your morning routine as a, as a kind of a big category, but, but your morning routine consists of all of those different dominoes and they just come automatic. You know, it's amazing. Uh, I'll bet, I'll bet if you were to, to really observe and record your morning habits, you would see that pretty much you do these same things over and over in the same order because it's it just feels right and and what sometimes when you get out of order something kind of knocks you out of whack you feel like you're 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 off your track and then you got to do something to get back on track a little bit to because there is a natural sequence of things and so um yeah and this you know in the workplace this can um this can, can really come into play too because we we are creatures of habit and so when things come up, for instance, um, you know, some people are really good at getting getting after it first thing in the morning and creating good routines for their workday. And some people just aren't very good at it. You know, maybe you, you know, your workday begins and you you start your day by removing all of the distractions. You get your cup of coffee and you sit down to make your plan. So you make a list of your top priorities to fo focus on. And then you figure out the out of these priorities, which ones are the ones that you have to do today and which ones can you let slide. And, and then, you know, maybe you set your, your time goals and your benchmarks. So then you just get after it and you with determination to get it done. Th that's a really healthy mindset uh, with some specific habits that's, uh, that, uh, um, you know, that could really be productive in the workplace. But then there's also some really unproductive habits in the workplace too, like when you get up and go to work. Have you ever seen any of that, Joe? Have you ever worked with a client that just kind of has a chaotic type of uh, morning routine? You know, um, like yeah, most of them. And so, yeah. <laughs> yep. Um, 
and there, there's a there's a there's a sense of a chaotic routine too. But there's also, um, there's also things that are very healthy sometimes to break habits as well. Like even even habits that aren't necessarily, you wouldn't think of them as bad. But um, like 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 for instance, like it, it actually your brain becomes hardwired for certain things. Like literally your, the, the structure of your brain changes as you develop a habit. And, um, and like, and I, I'm a right, a teacher, a professor at college who explained to us, like, you know, when you guys all come in here, we don't have assigned seats, but you always sit in the same seats. Mm -hmm. You know, that has to do with the way that your brain like wants to kind of fit into a structure and actually one of the best things you can do for your brain in those cases is actually break those sometimes and like sit in a different seat and do things a little bit different. So there's, it's very interesting how habits, you know, there's health, there's, there's healthy ones, there's unhealthy ones, and then there's like neutral ones. And some of those neutral ones, actually you can like really enhance your life by kind of breaking out of what feels normal and looking at things that are new from a new perspective or trying something a little bit differently, you know, and especially there's a lot of habits we don't even notice, like the habits of how we love our spouse or like, I was also thinking about like, even just, you know, when and how you make love and things like that, like breaking those habits can really like bring a lot of life to your marriage and to your family. And, uh, yeah, so I, I think about habits as, all three of those, you know, there's some that are neutral, there's some that are healthy, there's some that are unhealthy, and really we should be thinking about all three. Yeah, yeah, good point. And, and to elaborate on that a little bit too, I think, you know, I think really wisdom is knowing what habits, maybe that aren't healthy habits that you need to disrupt, and then having the wisdom to, to know what, what positive habits you need to build upon or strengthen, or maybe even start you know, from scratch, but just really having this, this kind of bird's eye view, this awareness of you and your habits so that you can, you can kind of see and do it as opposed to just, just, you know, hitting the throttle and just falling into the ruts as they, as, as they come. And, um, so let, let's, let's talk about that a little bit. Let's talk about disruption because we know that, uh, you know, we are our, our worst own, you know, our own worst enemies. We, we create the problems that we, we don't want to think that we want to think that our problems are like, it's always somebody else's fault, you know, somebody else uh, put us in this position. And so it's not really our fault, but the truth is, is we are our worst, our own worst enemies. And, and oftentimes it comes because we have just those, those habits in place. So let's talk about disruption a little bit, you know, in the workplace, Joe, I'm sure, you know, you, like me, we've seen a lot of crisis. We've seen people that are, are lost. They, they don't know where to go next. Maybe they're employees, maybe they're owners, maybe they're leaders, but there's a, there's a crisis and they don't know where to go next. And so if, if left to their own, uh, their own device, they would, they would just spiral out of control. So what are some ways that you can think of that, that we can maybe help people or, or maybe people can help themselves by creating a, a new set of dominoes uh, that doesn't spiral out of control, but that can, that can help us uh, bring positive results as opposed to negative results. Anything you can think of? Um, yeah, I think about, um, you know, that there's, uh, when I work with somebody, I like to look at like how much time in your schedule do you waste? You know, where do you, where do you lose, where are you losing, you know, basically burning time, you know, and really kind of look into that. I, I, I heard there was a survey where like about 40% of what people who like work at a job, they say that they're wasting that time. Um, but like working with an individual, working with an entrepreneur, they don't want to have any waste in their day, you know? And so trying to figure out where is the waste in your time? You know, I, 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 I read this thing by Elon Musk where, he schedules most of his meetings uh, for like five to seven minutes, you know, and it's like, wow, you better really get it done. You know, the better the, when you do that, the other guys better be ready to, you know, exactly what they're going to talk about, you know. Well, um, well, and he's probably targeting one or two topics to get the most important topics, and he probably doesn't have any small talk, any wasted time. He just gets right after what's most important. 
Right, right. Yeah. So you got to think about like like waste in your life. Like where are the, where is the time wasted? Where where uh, what things are kind of you know could we just eliminate you know from our life? You know, um, I think that's a big piece of uh, then leaving room for habits because you also need like you know we need to find room for things like creative thinking. You know, you have to have bandwidth to do that. You can't. Mm -hmm. the, the the great ideas don't come in five to seven minutes. We have to kind of create space for them. Yeah, yeah. Um, and and obviously, you know, if we want to disrupt bad habits, you know, or bad patterns, we have to not only have a, a good to do list, but we have to have a good to don't list, you know, and and figure out what needs to be cut out of our our world. And and habits has a lot to do with that. For instance, if you're if you're at work and you've you put in a good a good 10 or 15 minutes of deep thinking and uh and problem solving creative you know brainstorming and then you need a break so you just jump on facebook jump on mm -hmm. facebook social media and you just think oh, i'm gonna i'm gonna laugh or see some cute video that'll kind of ease my brain up a little bit well that's that's just a domino along the line that maybe could be replaced by something else maybe it's getting up and stretching or maybe it's getting up and uh, getting a glass of water or or whatever it is um but uh but it doesn't have to be something that could turn into a long drawn out thing that wastes a lot of your time you could just figure out how to avoid those time wasters that way um by by putting those automatic triggers in place like when i get done with this i'm going to then we fill in the blank and then when i'm done with that where i'm going to do this so you're already kind of figuring out the sequence of things that's that's one good way to remove waste I think from your daytime. Yeah. Well, that's good. Yeah. Um, so, you know, with crisis too, um, you know, there's, we're always going to have crisis in our lives, right? We're always going to have things that pop up of uncertainty that we just don't know how to deal with or things that we didn't expect. And, and in the workplace, we're going to have crisis popped up. And so I wanted to give you an example maybe of what, uh, you know, a healthy way to deal with crisis might be and then then an unhealthy way and how we can kind of arrange our dominoes to to fit that but you know with crisis maybe there's a, a problem that arises and so um if you have some healthy dominoes in place maybe the first domino would be you, you begin to calm people down you comfort people you figure out um where the chaos is coming from and you you start to um, you start to disable the chaos and try to bring a little bit of order to it. And then, and then maybe you, you go into information gathering mode. You start to ask questions and, and uh, find out the root of the problem. Maybe it's diagnostics that you go into quickly. You know, I think of like an EMT or ambulance driver or fireman or a police officer coming to a scene of a crime. They, uh, you know, they, they, they already have some dominoes in, in line that are connected to each other that the trigger sets them off and they just go into that mode you know whether it's maybe checking vital signs and then depending on the vital signs it you know changes what your next action will be and so it's a whole sequence and they're not being distracted by the emotional part they're not being distracted by chaos or uncertainty because they're focusing on what is certain what they know what their training is and those dominoes that have been put into effect so I, I really like that when you when you really look at the the healthy way of dealing with a crisis, and of course, people that um, have been trained, you know, uh, in in that regard, they've all had the training up front, which is kind of the purpose of this whole this whole podcast. Is that the idea is that we think of these things up front so that we already know what to do when the time comes, and you know, an unhealthy version of of a crisis might be you know the problem you know, occurs and you're triggered and then you immediately go into self-preservation mode, right? You, you're in feeling mode. You don't want to feel these awkward things. And so you want to avoid those feelings and you panic and you begin to fixate on safety or escaping the, the problem. And that's your response to it. And then you escape the problem and it, uh, but it, it continues on because you didn't have any positive impact on it. You just, you just escaped and you, you did something else. And, and then other people might suffer because there was something you could have done, but you didn't because you withdrew, you know? And so maybe some people, that's their set of dominoes when they get triggered with a crisis. And so the whole idea is how can we re, how can we reassemble our dominoes intentionally 
to move them in a pattern that is is positive. And uh, you know, I I think I think that's tough to do. Um, I think that's tough to do, Joe. Um, and I think we could all look look back and and just think of all of the 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 ways we didn't handle things right because we were following a script, you know, a prescript. Maybe it's a script that we learned from our parents. Maybe it was a script that we just didn't anticipate because we just didn't think it was ever going to be a problem. Kind of like a 16 year old with a car accident. They don't even think about a car accident. They just go. It's just out of sight, out of mind. They just go and they they haven't thought through what they're going to do and why the why they should even follow the speed limit, right? They just go. <laughs> and uh, yeah. So, um anyway, Joe, I, what's your thoughts on that? Any any other thoughts on on the domino effect? Yeah, I'm I'm thinking about my day as I'm having this and I'm like there are some things. Um one thing is that a habit that I think I've got to deal with is uh I started playing this little game on my phone that it kind of let, allowed me to interact with Sam. It was just this little um video game uh that I downloaded and uh, you know, it's amazing how much validation I could get from watching like little tanks blow up on this little game. And, uh, it, and it really, um, you know, if it became, it, as I think about it, as I'm thinking about what habits I need in my life removed, uh, I think about that one because it actually has turned into this thing where it's not just about my, me interacting with Sam now, I actually really enjoy the game. And I'm thinking about it, like I start, I kind of play it for a few minutes every day um, and probably here and there, you know, but like it probably consumes about 20, 30 minutes a day of me. And I'm thinking about that and like you, you lay out 30 minutes over the course of a week and then over a month and then over a year, that's a lot of, that's a lot of time. And I'm just thinking I probably need to delete that game and get that, get that out just to give me the extra space to think. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, so there's an, one area that I'm thinking about, uh, at the end of this podcast and, the, and, and hopefully the listeners out there are thinking about what is that thing that you do that just kind of needs to be eliminated and you just need to hit delete and go share with somebody else and get some accountability and just take it out. Um, you know, um, you need to take it out. And, and then if, if I, I think one of the biggest habits in America that takes a lot of people out is pornography it's uh you know it's it's a habit it becomes like a it's literally like an addiction and um and i would get some accountability on that one too that one is going to require some accountability to get oh, yeah. off of because it's a little more than just a habit it's actually like uh that's an addiction and so um but that time every day if you could ch transition that to doing something else could be tremendous um yep. for anybody yeah so I would just want to summarize this into three main points that uh, hopefully will give you an idea of everything we've talked about so far. But so the first point is, you know, when it comes to domino habits, the key is to predetermine our domino habits to arrange them uh, for the most effective results that help you in the long run. So it's the long run. It's not not immediate results. And the, the second one is that we need to replace our unhealthy dominoes that meet our immediate needs that, you know, maybe fears and appetites with healthy dominoes that meet our longer term needs and the needs of others. Maybe it's generosity, growth, or impact. And, and then the third point here is that our habits will always reflect what is most important to us. Um, it, and it's really our values and it's, it's real values. It's not the ideals that we tell people. You know, we might tell people something, but, our habits and our actions are going to reveal what's truly most important to us. And, uh, and so I think, I think that's important that uh, we just really proactively think about it. What's most important to us and how can I arrange my habits to, to display that? That way we don't get off track and start, start illustrating things that aren't really important to us, you know, that we, we're, we're displaying what we really truly want to display, what we're, what we're intentionally trying to display and not what's just coming about by accident, by allowing our circumstances or the culture to direct us rather than being directed by God. So uh, anyway, that's, that's kind of the summary, Joe. Um, hopefully this was effective and hopefully people thought this was interesting, but uh, leave some comments uh, if you'd like. We'd love to hear from you and uh, subscribe. 
Um, I don't know, Joe. Any last uh, any last words of wisdom? Uh, I just uh, I just encourage everybody to get out and go snowmobiling once a year. Oh yeah, <laughs> that's yeah. my words of wisdom. No for doubt. This year. All right, thanks everybody, and we will see you on the next episode. 